Kelly Hushin, editor of the Trade Tech blog, and I'm here at Trade Tech USA at the Javits Center, and I'm here with Peter Nabik from Alston Trading. Welcome. Thanks. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about your firm? Where do you guys come from, and uh, what's your experience in the, in the market? Sure. Uh, Alston Trading is a proprietary trading company uh, located in Chicago. We trade uh, in markets across the world. Um, we have London and offices, uh, office in London as well. Um, and. Uh, we trade cross-asset class. We trade equities, options, FX, cash, uh, futures. And how big is the firm? Uh, about 130 people. Okay, great. So you gave a presentation this morning. We're here at the buy side slash HFT summit, and uh, you kind of gave a, a presentation about what HFT is really all about. How do we define it? Um, so I guess the first natural question is, what is HFT all about, and how do we define it? I know we're kind of getting yeah. past that in the U.S. here, but you know it's always good to lay right. out the. Well, it's actually it's coming up uh, more and more um, uh, because as it becomes more of a regulatory topic, you need to have a concrete definition. The uh, vast amount of definitions that are out there are anecdotal. If you look online, um, if you uh, read uh, newspaper articles about this, uh, industry press about it, even if you try to uh, take someone's opinion or editorial and pull from that what their definition of high-frequency trading is, what you find uh, most of the time uh, is that it has something to do with low latency. Um, it has uh, something to do with a lot of order entry. Uh, it has something to do with technology uh, and automation. Uh, but what you rarely find in the definitions is that it has anything at all to do with actually trading a lot. I mean, the very name itself, high frequency trading, implies this is trading that happens a lot. Right. Uh, but most of the definitions are include things like go home flat at the end of the day, which I can do ah. trading a one lot of one equity you know, right. twice, um, or uh, submits and cancels massive amounts of orders. Submitting and canceling massive amounts of orders uh, is something that some algorithms do, um, right. but that's not actually trading a lot. You could do right. that all day and never trade. Um, so, uh, so what's the problem then with this definition uh, crisis? Uh, well, the problem with all the definitions that have been out there, uh, and the problem with the anecdotal definitions we use, is that now more and more, um, regulators are feeling the need to uh, at least take a position on high frequency ah. trading. And when you take the anecdotal and try to create regulations around that, you have some issues. So high frequency trading, the name itself is arbitrary. Right. The things that go along with that, low latency, well how low? Right. Um, trading a lot, well, how much is a lot? Uh, canceling a lot, how much is canceling a lot? How big of a position counts as an at-risk position? Um, so. Um, when you take all of these things into account, you're dealing with the arbitrary. And what you need to do when you're dealing with regulation is deal with the very specific. Right. So a lot of moving parts, we have to better define them, it seems. Uh, yeah, we do. And so the question becomes, uh, and this is what a lot of my presentation was about, is that do you really want to have high frequency trading be part of regulation or just part of the general discussion? If you're using high frequency trading as part of the general discussion in the industry, you're just setting up a framework. Uh, within which we can have a shared context. Mm -hmm. So uh, to that end, I say that high frequency trading is simply trading. It's the natural evolution of trading behavior. Um, and it is made possible by technology. Right. And most recent technology means that we can trade more products and more of each of those products than we ever could before. Do you think that uh, defining high frequency trading too strictly would sort of cause problems in the future because technology is just going to continue to evolve. Yes, certainly. If, if you define, well, uh, for general discussion, no, because it can be evolutionary. You know, right. uh, you can say, well, anything less than five milliseconds, and then six months later, if we're just generally discussing it, you can say anything less than two and a half or anything less than a hundred right. But if you're talking about regulation, uh, I question whether or not we really even want to define high frequency trading for regulation. Uh, like the FIA uh, Futures Industry Association Principal Traders Group. Uh, wrote in response to uh, Commissioner O'Malley's request for a definition. Um, high frequency trading in and of itself is arbitrary, so let's talk about the more specific things. If we're actually concerned about the risk of direct connect participants, right. then we should define direct connect participants. If we're concerned about the risk of too many messages in the market, then we need to define what's too many messages. Neither of those things requires a definition of high frequency trading. Uh, for example, I could message all day and never trade. I'm not trading with high frequency, but I'm messaging a lot. Right. Um, so all those things need to be taken into account. Uh, uh, I think for just a general conversation on the marketplace, yeah, let's talk about high frequency trading. I guess we can kind of have that phrase out there. The big problem is, is that the 
normally the way you do go about defining something is there is a, a general shared opinion uh, in society as to what something means. Right. And then you put a formal definition around it and then eventually uh, it actually gets taken over by stereotypes and the definition, <laughs> not, well the definition gets pulled away from its original point and right. then there becomes a battle of how people use it and what it actually means. Right. Well, we're going about it completely wrong. We have no shared opinion as to what high frequency trading means. Just Google high frequency trading and look at all the different definitions. Um, stereotypes have already taken over the word. It's already been pulled out and used to mean all sorts of things, usually driven by fear. Mm -hmm. And now we're trying to define it. Uh, and I'm not sure how productive that will be. Right. So then what do you think the answer is in terms of regulation? I mean, like you said, there already is stereotypes. I've mm -hmm. seen uh, 60 Minutes and 2020 <laughs> yeah. uh, plugs uh, about high frequency trading showing the consumer that this is this crazy behavior that's going on uh, and just kind of painting a somewhat right. cynical picture of, of the action. Um, so what is the answer? Do we regulate it and then maybe people will better understand it as a whole or should we just kind of not ever regulate it. No, uh, I think with all regulation you need to say what is the issue that we're trying to regulate, what are we trying to monitor, um, what are we trying to put a legal framework around in the marketplace, and then define that, uh, and that isn't just one thing, it would be multiple things, and then create the regulations to approach those. Right. Uh, and I think that the problem with high frequency trading is because it has been taken over by different stereotypes, um, when you uh, sit back and look at it, it's very hard to define it without taking into account all the different opinions and stereotypes. So now you have one large nebulous cloud that you're trying to define. And I don't know if that's how you write uh, good regulation. I, I think right. you write regulation towards the problem you're trying to solve. Um, and so that's where I, how I would approach it, is take the base problems you're trying to solve, whether it be two or three or twenty, and approach all of those uh, separately as opposed to trying to lump them into a consolidated right. High frequency trade. Can you tell us what you've enjoyed about Trade Tech, what you've learned, what you've uh, yeah. you know, liked? You know, Trade Tech, uh, uh, this Trade Tech USA is the first conference I've been to that actually has informal discussion based around the panels and the presentations that are going on. Um, there is nothing better for making sure that this industry is a sustainable one and that the markets are well done uh, and well monitored and well controlled than putting really smart people in a room and letting them talk about the issues that are at hand. Uh, and this is allowing for that. Great. Would you make the argument that all traders have the ability to do this it's just about access to technology because I've heard arguments that you know this is just a natural evolution of, of trading and you know back uh, 50 years ago people were all in a huff about you know things not being done in person and you know now that everyone's in a huff about things being done in two milliseconds so mm -hmm. do you think everyone has equal access to this technology and uh, it's really not about that or is there an unfair sort of access? Uh, no, there's no unfair access. Everyone okay. has access uh, that is driven by their own capital investment uh, that they choose to do. Uh, if you choose to be the fastest in the industry, you make that capital investment and you do it. Uh, if you choose to, uh, to rely primarily on strategy and you maybe don't need to be the fastest, you invest your capital wisely in that sense. Um, I can tell you what it does do though, is, mm -hmm. is the capital is not always prohibitive to be a, a player. Um, what was prohibitive in the pit was how many people could be on the top step. Right. You know, there was a geographic confining of who can be on that top step. There is no confining uh, of who can be in the data center. I mean, uh, granted, there is the data centers are only so big, mm -hmm. but most of them are not full to capacity. Right. You know, the CME one that was just built out, they're starting phase two of the build out, which means mm -hmm. there's plenty more room. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the the Nicey Life data center in uh, um, Mawa is huge mm -hmm. and not right. full yet either. Right. There's plenty of space, uh, much more than there ever was on the top floor of the pit. <laughs> Got it, okay. Well, it's interesting to talk about this. Um, it's evolved even so much from last year, uh, so <laughs> I'm excited to talk to more people about it. But thank you so much for being here and for presenting today, and we hope you enjoy the rest of the conference. No problem. Thank you. All right.